So in this video I want to share with you the uh, actual measurements for the new longer range Yaki bike club that uh, some of you who follow me will know I've been working on this for the last few weeks now and it actually has eight parasitic elements and the main driven element here and of course the back reflector. Now the measurements for the back reflector and the main driven element are exactly the same as the uh, smaller bike called Yagi and the eight parasitic elements go down in increments of five millimeters so the actual measurements were uh, quite simple. So what we'll do then, we'll go over to the bench and I'll go over some of the measurements for the uh, elements themselves. I'm not going to go into too much detail of how you uh, actually construct this because it's the same method as the uh, smaller Biquad Yagi, so there's no real difference there. And we'll also give it a test at the end of the video just to compare it against its uh, sibling, the original Biquad Yagi. So for anybody who wants to have a go at making this antenna for themselves, I've put this PDF document together that you can download and it's got all the uh, measurements for the spacings and the measurements for each one of the elements. And I've also included the artwork as a uh, PDF document here so you can actually uh, transfer this and have a go at uh, etching them out yourselves if you want to. And one of the differences as well, I've actually numbered each one of these elements because when I actually made it, I uh, had to get my digital calipers out to actually uh, sort them out into the correct order because we're only talking about uh, five millimeter difference here in between the uh, elements themselves. So it's really, really small. So this longer Biquad Yagi then has uh, nine elements here. Now that may actually change when I put it into production. If uh, you followed me, from uh, when I did my first few videos on the Biquad Yagi. When I first prototyped this, it actually had four parasitic elements and the uh, main driven elements. So what I actually found out when I actually went to put that into production is that one extra element here, that extra parasitic element was gonna actually cost quite a lot of money because of the waste on the uh, actual board. So uh, I actually dropped that one, which didn't make a great deal of difference to the overall performance of the Biquad Yagi. So when I actually plan this out and do the Gerber files, if there's uh, going to be too much waste, then uh, I may drop an element, but um, I also may add an element if, um, you know, I can fit that in and it comes in the uh, costings right, because you have to pay for the uh, amount of copper that you also etch away that you don't use because you pay for uh, the board as a whole. And that's another thing to remember with a uh, Yagi antenna in particular. There's uh, a threshold and there is a proper name for it, but I can't remember it off the top of my head now, where you can't just keep adding parasitic elements and expect to uh, increase your gain. The uh, parasitic elements, when you add them, you uh, get to a certain point and they only make very, very small differences to the gain of the antenna. And then uh, you get to another point and uh, they actually uh, make no difference. And then there's a tipping point where adding parasitic elements actually affects the performance of the uh, Yagi antenna as well. So the, the performance actually drops off, even though it's got more parasitic elements. And because this is a hybrid hybrid antenna, so it takes some of the characteristics of the Biquad and some of the characteristics of the Yagi, you have to be careful with this as well because you'll get the same drop-off point and uh, the same kind of effects that you would get with the Yagi. So as for constructing the nine element uh, antenna goes, it's just exactly the same as the uh, smaller one, same techniques, but uh, I am changing the length of these spaces here to uh, 20 millimeters. And uh, what that will allow me to do is actually use one of these brackets without having to uh, grind it flat down here on this side to fit it in the uh, space between the reflector and this back plate here. So I haven't got the uh, brass inserts yet, the 20 millimeter ones. So I'm just gonna use these plastic ones for now. So here is the uh, longer range Biquad Yagi. Now it's all constructed. And uh, as I said, I didn't go into any detail to uh, the construction at all in this video. If you're new to my channel, I'll link in the uh, smaller Yagi Biquad in the description below because uh, basically it's virtually the same as a smaller one. 
so I think what we'll do is we'll give this a test now and instead of actually just um, seeing how many access points it can pick up that can be a bit of a false positive so uh, what we'll do we'll hook up the smaller biquad Yagi first and we'll choose a signal that's about uh, 50 to 60 percent with the smaller one and then we'll hook up this longer range one and try and find that same signal and see if we get an increase on that so we'll do a quick scan then and uh, we'll choose a channel that's around 50-60% to uh, actually test against the longer range Biquad Yagi. So I'll just let them load up. So we've got a few to choose from but I'm going to go with uh, Technical Array. It's nice and easy to remember and it's around that 50 uh, 58 60 percent mark it's jumping up and down a bit the maximum that it has been so far is 62 percent so that'll be a nice test to test the uh, longer range biquad yagi against so we've got the longer range uh, biquad yagi hooked up so let's give it a scan and see how that performs just let everything load up and settle down So there's the access point, technical array, and it's currently 81% and it looks nice and stable. So definitely performs better than the uh, original Biquad Yagi. So uh, definitely a bit more gain there for those uh, extra elements. So a much fairer test then than just actually counting access points. So it's got quite a few access points, but uh, that is a much better test to see how powerful it actually is over distance. So I hope you enjoyed that little video. It uh, wasn't too long because I didn't have to go over the actual construction of the uh, Bicord Yagi again. The construction for both of these are identical. It was just to get the measurements out there because I know there's quite a few of my subscribers who actually I'd like to have a go at making these themselves. So I have got a, a couple of decisions to do before I actually send these off to production. I uh, haven't made the Gerber files yet and uh, I have to decide whether I'm going to go with 8 elements, 9 elements or maybe even 10 elements. It depends how I can lay it out on a uh, piece of uh, rectangle PCB to uh, reduce the amount of waste on that uh, PCB as possible because that will drive the price up if I've uh, got too much waste when uh, the elements are cut out or routed out then uh, I have to pay for that so it does push the price up a little bit so that's why originally the uh, Biquad Yagi here the smaller one had uh, four parasitic elements and the driven element here and uh, because of cost I dropped one of the parasitic elements didn't make too much difference to the actual performance of the antenna itself but it did make a big difference to the cost so as I've said, hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, please do download the PDF and have a go at making them yourself. And uh, if you've got any questions, drop them below. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll uh, join me on the next one.